Jerusalem artichokes, also known as sunchokes, are a fantastic choice for many home gardeners and homesteaders. Not only are they a beautiful flower that attracts pollinators, but they produce knobby potato-like edible tubers that are delicious and nutritious. The roots can be used much the way we use potatoes, and they have a lower glycemic index, which is better for diabetics, and the leaves and flowers make a tea that's great for gut health. A long-lived and easy-to-grow perennial, they are hardy between USDA zones 2 through 8. Despite the name, this plant is native to North America and was planted by the Native Americans. Early colonists learned of the plant from them and had tubers shipped back to Europe where it naturalized. Sunchokes come in a variety of colors and shapes. Because Jerusalem artichokes are a niche plant, many stores will sell them without bothering to specify the variety. However, there are several good varieties. I have a list of my favorites in our blog article that will that I will list down in the description. They are a perennial, so choose a spot wisely and prepare the soil with compost. They like a spot in full sun. They also like light soil since they are tubers, so I amended my heavy clay soil with green sand. Find a good spot for them. Sunchokes are in the sunflower family and get quite tall, 6 to 10 feet high. The Skorsospelka variety, developed in Russia, for their large tuber size gets 14 feet high, so plant near a fence or along the edge of a garden. The other thing to consider is that they are invasive and will spread. If you have a small garden, put them in a raised bed so they don't creep into your other garden areas. Another fun planting tip If you live in an urban area with a silly HOA rule, you can pass the Jerusalem artichokes off as a pretty flower. My last tip is not to plant them too close to other crops. Like many sunflower species, Jerusalem artichokes produce an allopathic chemical that can suppress the growth of other plants. This is great for reducing weed competition, but not so great for companion planting. A Jerusalem artichoke has eyes, much like a potato, where they will sprout. Planting the tubers in early spring as soon as the soil can be worked. For my zone six friends, I usually plant in late March or early April. Some people cut the tubers before planting. I do not but I don't cut potatoes either. So if you cut them, make sure you have an eye in each section and let them dry out a day. Plant the tubers four inches deep, one and a half to two feet apart, in rows spaced two and a half to three and a half feet apart. These plants can grow quite big and it's important to give them enough space to grow without feeling overcrowded. Jerusalem artichokes grow vigorously and often outcompete weeds, but you should still try to keep weeds out of their bed, especially perennial weeds. Jerusalem artichokes have a fabulous root system that helps anchor the plants. They reproduce from rhizomes and tubers not harvested, so always leave some tubers in the ground for the plant. They are considered drought-tolerant perennials. However, one study I read shows that drought conditions do decrease yield, so watering on occasion is still a good idea during hot weather. Jerusalem artichokes are very hardy, and I have not had many insect problems. However, they can be vulnerable to insect pests like aphids, root maggots, and flea beetles. They are popular with rodents, so watch freshly planted areas for squirrels and groundhogs. Once they are established, they can stand up to the occasional squirrel. Jerusalem artichokes are great for our local pollinators and attract many butterfly species, including monarchs. You can harvest Jerusalem artichokes starting in early fall, 
However, wait till after a few frosts to get the best flavor. Once cold weather has set in and the plant has withered and died, you can dig them up. They store well in a refrigerator in a plastic bag for up to two months. However, I like to harvest them as I need them throughout the winter when the ground is not frozen. They keep well in the soil and you can harvest them through early spring. They will start growing as soon as the soil temp hits about 45 degrees Fahrenheit. After I harvest and the plants die back, I put some aged compost on the bed and sometimes a nice straw mulch. Sun chokes are bumpy. That's just the nature of the plant, so they will need a good scrubbing before preparing them. They are delicious roasted and boiled and mashed. You can also eat them raw on salad. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Please boop that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and have a fabulous day.